What's up everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I've got some questions down in the comments section about my thoughts on system Balaga and some of the alcohol laws here in Sweden. Uh, so in this video I'm going to take some time to answer those questions and talk about the differences in alcohol between America and Sweden. <music> Before I get started, I think it's really important to say that whichever country you live in, it's really important that you follow all laws related to alcohol and also that if you do choose to consume alcohol, it's not really something that's especially healthy for you, especially if you drink it in large quantities. So always to think to consume it in moderation uh, or if you choose not to consume it at all, it's definitely probably going to benefit you in the long run. So just keep that in mind as I'm talking about alcohol in these next few points that I'm gonna make. So let's start off with the basics. In America, it's pretty much standard across the board. You have to be 21 to purchase or consume alcohol, uh, which is higher than most countries in the world. I know when I was very, very young, I lived in Germany for a year and the drinking laws in Germany are much different. You can drink beer and wine at the age of 16 and you can't have hard liquor until the age of 18. But in America, it's pretty much 21 across the board. Um, a long time ago, there were some states where you could drink at the age of 19, but I'm pretty sure uh, almost every state, or I think every state in America now has 21 as the drinking age. In Sweden, they fall kind of in the middle of America and Germany. Uh, their drinking laws, you can go out and purchase a beer at a restaurant at the age of 18 when you're supervised and you're out and about. Um, so that's not a problem. But to purchase alcohol at the system Bologit, you have to be 20 years of age. And basically, uh, the system Bologit, how it works is uh, in Sweden, you cannot purchase regular beer and wine at the grocery stores here. I'm pretty sure they have a limit uh, that's right around 3%. I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but any drink that contains more than that percentage of alcohol, they cannot sell uh, at regular grocery stores here in Sweden. So if you want to drink regular beer, uh, which is usually 5% or higher, you've got to go to System Belog at the special state-controlled liquor store and able to purchase that. So. Um, basically, it's it's a system that has a lot of pros and cons. Some positive things about System Belaget are they are able to regulate and make sure that minors aren't able to p purchase the alcohol much better than in America. Um, it's not as easy to regulate. Maybe some grocery stores forget to check IDs and minors are able to get their hands uh, on the alcohol a little bit easier. Um, so that is one positive with the system. They're able to better enforce the legal drinking laws here in Sweden um, because pretty much all alcohol goes through them. Uh, and also there are some benefits to System Belaget. Um, they are able to uh, regulate and look into the alcohol that they're selling uh, to the Swedish citizens here. Um, they pretty much do a lot of research and make sure that they have a nice variety of things that they're selling but also um, it's really well regulated so like in America college parties and things people would buy these plastic bottle vodkas that were just absolutely terrible. It tasted like gasoline. Uh, here, whatever you buy at System Belaga is gonna have a certain level of quality, I think. Even when you buy the really cheap wines and beers, they still taste much better than the absolutely cheap alcohol uh, in America that some people opt to buy. So that is one positive that System Belaga is able to regulate things uh, and make sure that they're only selling quality alcohol. Um, but at the same time, uh, the alcohol at System Belaga is much more expensive than if I were to go and buy alcohol in the States. Uh, it does vary from state to state. In some states, you cannot buy alcohol in a grocery store and they do have state-run liquor stores. And in other states, uh, you can buy alcohol in the grocery store. So alcohol is something that's regulated differently depending on what state you're in. And that also goes for prices in America. Uh, for example, the liquor prices in the state of Washington where I live are much, much higher uh, than some other states that are in the surrounding area like Idaho and Oregon. They're generally cheaper, uh, but you do have to purchase alcohol in liquor stores in Idaho and Oregon versus in Washington. You can buy it in a grocery store. If you go down to California, alcohol is extremely cheap, probably half the price of what you would pay uh, for alcohol here in Sweden. So it does depend on the states uh, that you're in when you are in America. Um, but that is one thing to keep in mind. The alcohol is much cheaper in America and there is more of a supply because you're not limited to only the thing that System Belaget has. Pretty much anything uh, you can find 
and it's driven by supply and demand much more than the regulated system that they have here in Sweden. Another thing about System Belaget that can kind of be a bummer uh, is you really have to plan ahead because they have different opening hours than like the regular grocery stores here in Sweden. Like for example, System Belaget is usually not open on Sundays. So if you want to purchase alcohol, you do have to plan ahead and they do close their stores uh, relatively early on Saturdays. So if you're going to go out and party on the weekends, you do have to plan ahead and purchase alcohol ahead of time uh, because if you go too late, the System Belagets will be closed and there will be no way of purchasing alcohol here in Sweden, whereas in America, their stores open at 2 in the morning, uh, you can go in and buy alcohol at 2 in the morning and it's no problem. You can pop into Walmart or something. So you do have to plan ahead. Uh, so that is one positive too. Uh, the Swedes have a really good idea around alcohol of controlling it and making people think about what they're going to consume and plan ahead rather than going in at 2 in the morning and, oh, we're out of beer. Let's go make a run. No, it's much more controlled. Uh, so that is a positive about Sweden when it comes to the alcohol. Another thing I want to touch on in this video are the laws surrounding drinking and driving. Now, it is worth noting that in Sweden there is much better public transportation, so it's easier to get where you need to go uh, without having to drive. Now, in America, the alcohol limit, the legal limit for driving is 0.08. So in most cases, if you're a decently sized person, you can have a drink or two at a party and still be legally allowed to drive. So that it's a little bit of a different culture in Sweden because the alcohol laws are at 0.02 in order to drive. So if you have one drink here in Sweden, you'll probably be over the legal limit and they take drink drinking and driving extremely seriously here in Sweden and I think the people that live here in Sweden do abide by those laws much more like people if they know that they have to drive home they will pretty much decide not to drink at all in most cases and if they do want to drink and they don't have a ride home or a way of getting home a lot of times they will spend the night or something so they're much more responsible when it comes to drinking and driving which I think is a really really good thing because I knew some people in America that ended up dying or getting seriously hurt because they were involved in drinking and driving accidents which is really really sad and the Swedes take this issue extremely seriously Seriously, if you drink, do not get behind the wheel of a vehicle because you're not only putting yourself in danger, but you're putting people, other people's lives in danger. So it's not a good thing at all. So I'm, it's really, really nice that the Swedes take drinking and driving very seriously. And I think that's one thing that America should take a bit more seriously. They've tried to crack down on it more in recent years, but 0.08 is such a high level um, that people don't necessarily know the limits a lot of times and they'll think they had two or three drinks, oh, I can drive home. It's really not safe to do that. So if you're gonna go out and drink in America, it's important to have a designated driver. And so I think, that is something that is just a little bit different because their level is four times higher of what the level is here in Sweden. So those are three ways that the alcohol cultures are different between America and Sweden. Now, I don't think there is one right way and one wrong way of doing it. Um, there are benefits to both sides. Uh, in Sweden, it's really nice that it's regulated in some aspects, but in other aspects, it's maybe not as nice uh, because there is more of a selection in the US. You can buy alcohol around the clock. You're not limited to uh, living by the system belog way of purchasing alcohol. So there are a lot more options when it comes to alcohol in America because it's not as tightly regulated and just the cost in general is much lower. Uh, but I suppose if you're gonna tax something, Alcohol is a good thing to tax because it's not really good for you and the Swedes tax alcohol much more than a lot of comp than a lot of countries do. Uh, so it does encourage people to drink less, which I think is good overall. So those are my thoughts on the alcohol cultures in America versus Sweden. But yeah, I'm interested to see what you guys think about this topic, especially those of you who live in Sweden, um, because the cultures are very, very different surrounding alcohol. So I'm interested to see what you guys think of System Belaget, because I've heard a lot of good things and a lot of people that don't necessarily like it. Some people think that it's really good, they've got good quality, they can regulate it, and some people wish that they had some more options and freedom when it comes to alcohol. So I want to defer to you guys, and I'm really, really curious to see what you guys say in the comment section below. Uh, but with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. 
Uh, but stay tuned for future videos because I've got a ton more content coming out between the differences of America and Sweden. So stay tuned for future videos. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button so that you can follow along my adventures and stories as I talk about the difference in cultures between America and Sweden. So with that, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Oh,